It appears the Lions staff is intact, we think. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, it's a Friday edition of Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Matt Derry with you on a Friday, uh, February 2nd into Saturday, February 3rd. I hope everybody's doing great. Had a great week this week, and it wasn't easy having to uh, stomach through hearing Niners and Chiefs talk and Dan Campbell Lions talk and all of this stuff, but we made it. We are here on a Friday. Thanks for making us your first listen and checking us out wherever you get your podcast. Shout out to our everydayers that are out there that watch or listen each and every day. Again, wherever you get your podcasts, whether it's Spotify, Apple, or maybe you're watching on our Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Please subscribe so you get the show each and every day here on Locked On Lions. We are over 10,000 subscribers. The show today brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash LockedOnNFL. That's linkedin.com slash LockedOnNFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Coming up on the show today, a couple of Super Bowl topics, including one, which is next week at the Super Bowl. Everybody will be on Radio Row, and they'll be wondering about assistant coaching hires and offensive coordinators. Where do the Lions stand with that? Also, a question about you, Lions fans, and will you uh, even be watching next week's game? We'll get into that coming up momentarily. Teddy Bridgewater, his retirement pretty much official now. We know what his next stop is going to be as uh, he's going to be coaching high school football, but he's going to stay on to help one of the Lions, and that is uh, pretty cool. we got our first mock draft we're going to go over from theathletic.com and uh, also a little bit of a Senior Bowl nuggets. All of that today here on a Friday edition of Lockdown Lions. Please follow us on Twitter at Dairy Speaks at Lockdown Lions, Matt Dairy Facebook fan page on Threads at The Real Matt Dairy, and also on YouTube. All right, a couple of things. Number one, next week at the Super Bowl, uh, a lot of your favorite uh, national radio shows or podcasts or whatever that you listen to or check out and watch, I will be live from Vegas at Radio Row and everything else. And it's also a time when, and we I know we've had a lot of coordinators hired uh, um, and, and uh, assistant coaches added. Remember, it was last year at the Super Bowl when uh, Deuce Staley and Todd Wash left the Lions to go to Carolina. We're like, oh, oh, attrition with the Lions coaching staff. Well, turned out to work out just fine, didn't it, for the Lions this year? As, of course, they won the NFC North and won two playoff games. But as of right now, uh, a couple of Lions assistant coaches that interviewed for the Tampa Bay Bucks offensive coordinator job are staying right here, at least for now. Uh, passing game coordinator Tanner, uh, Tanner Engstrand, who's interviewed a bunch of places, and wideouts coach Antoine Randall L, both losing out to Liam Cohen, um, who is the Kentucky offensive coordinator and uh, quarterbacks coach. Liam Cohen, C O E N, is going to be the Bucks OC under Todd Bowles. Now, there are still other court, uh, coordinator uh, jobs open, other higher ranking assistant jobs. If you're thinking about somebody like Tanner Engstrand or even Antoine Randall L, Hank Fraley, whomever, uh, the Seahawks. Um, are going to interview Engstrand, the Lions pass game coordinator, for their offensive coordinator job. Um, of course, Shane Waldron now is gone and in Chicago with the Bears. Seahawks have a new coach and Mike McDonald, the uh, former Ravens defensive coordinator, and Miami, uh, Michigan, I should say, D coordinator. Tanner Engstrand already interviewed for the Patriots offensive coordinator job, uh, but he's not going to get that because um, the Pats have hired former Browns OC, Alex Van Pelt, but uh, Engstrand, very, very popular assistant around the league, uh, is, is big. He used to coach the tight ends for the Lions. Now he's just kind of the passing game coordinator working with Ben Johnson, and uh, he's popular. He's getting a lot of opportunities to uh, interview and talk to other people. But as of right now, as of right now, Ben Johnson back, Aaron Glenn back, Fraley, Randall L., Kelvin Shepard, all these assistant coaches. We told you yesterday – with the Colton Pouncey about Terrell Williams, who apparently is coming over from the Tennessee Titans. But the last really man standing in terms of Lions assistant coaches is Tanner Engstrand, 
And we'll see if he gets the Seahawks OC job or not. But he's been interviewing and getting opportunities. But when you have a good team, you have a good coaching staff, you're going to get guys poached. That's just how it goes. We saw it last year, like I said, when Wash and Staley uh, bolted and went to uh, Carolina. So as of right now, band seems to be back together. But we'll know more next week as we have Super Bowl week next week. Speaking of the Super Bowl, I was talking to an everydayer today, the legendary Noah Taluki, who we had on the show earlier this year. He's a big Lions fan, Lions listener, and he was working in the Ravens media relations department uh, this year. And Noah and I were talking today about something else. And he brought up the Super Bowl and how he, he's probably not going to watch it. And I said, man, that's interesting. Because going back to my childhood, all right, as a Cleveland Browns fan growing up in the 216, I can tell you right now, in 86, 87, and 89, when the Denver Broncos went to the Super Bowl after knocking off my Browns, not once, not twice, but three times in the AFC Championship game in the span of four years, I didn't watch those Super Bowls. I couldn't do it. I could not watch Mr. Ed, er, John Elway, play in that game. I couldn't do it. I couldn't stomach it. And, you know, Noah works for the Ravens. They lose. Noah's a Lions fan. They lose, both in the championship game. So I can understand why he's like, I'm not going to. He'll end up watching. I know the kid, okay? But, like, what about you? Are there fans out there that next week tune all of this out just because the Lions lost? Can you stomach, after what happened last Sunday, what happened in the NFC Championship game, the 17-point gag away, the all of that, all the talk about the Dan Campbell decisions and what the Lions didn't do and the drop passes and everything else. Are there any Are there any of you that are going to skip the game and not even watch it and go, I can't even watch, I can't even stomach, I can't even put lay my eyes on the Niners playing in a game that quite honestly the Lions probably should be playing in. That second half was so abysmal. I, I, we're not even going to touch on it. You just know what I mean. I just wonder if Lions fans, and we'll, I want to see some of the comments on YouTube and on Twitter and everything else, if Lions fans are going to skip this game. I'm not. I, I'm 50 years old now, okay? In 86, I was 13. I was a young, bitter, pissed-off Cleveland fan and kid that said, I'm not going to watch, you know, Denver play the Giants and whoever they were playing back then. I mean, and it was three years of this out of four where I just could not, I couldn't even get excited to even watch the game. Now, fast forward to now, all right, 2024, there's a lot more involved with the Super Bowl. There's cool commercials. There's the singing. There's the halftime show, you know, 17 national anthems before the game. Everything else that goes on, the pomp and circumstance. I'm past it, all right? I know the Lions deserve to be there. I know the Lions are going to be back, and they're going to they're going to uh, hopefully improve this roster, get better, and have another chance at it, another crack at it next year. But I'm going to watch the Super Bowl. I'm not going to say, oh, I'm not going to watch because the Niners are there. I get it. I get hardcore Lion fans that just won't do it. I'm going to check it out. All right. Number one, like I said, I'm older. My wife will probably want to watch it for the commercials and everything else. I may watch with some friends. I don't know. But I'm going to check the game out. I, I, it's, the last, it's the last football game we're going to have for a while. Unless you're a UFL fan. Shout out to The Rock, right? Uh, know your role, shut your mouth, jabroni. I mean, it's the NFL. I'm going to be watching. But maybe for some of you, nope, I will not view San Francisco playing Kansas City. Plus, we saw that game three years ago. We're getting a rerun, basically. So I'm interested in that. Put a comment down there on YouTube or, or hit me up on Twitter with your response to that. I'm going to be watching. Will you be watching? Is a, uh, like a legit question here. All right. Teddy Bridgewater is no longer going to be on the Detroit Lions. We saw him put his arm around Dan Campbell. They walked arm in arm, arm around each other out of the stadium at Levi Stadium in San Francisco and Santa, uh, excuse me, in Santa Clara last week as the veteran is hanging him up. But what I love is he's still going to be a part of the organization in a way. And I will explain that coming up next right here on this Friday edition of Locked on Lions.
And our friends at Nissan want to tell you, are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level, right? The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class exclusive Google built-in is your always updated assistant to call on for almost anything you need. Seriously. Nissan's incredible lineup also includes the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder, has room up to uh, eight, an expansive cargo capacity, and enhanced available 4x4 capability, 284 horsepower, and up to 6,000 pounds of towing. When adventure calls, that Pathfinder is there to answer. Love the 2024 Nissan Rogue. Love the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder. Awesome cars from our friends at Nissan. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, and go find your next big adventure, all right? Check out the website at shopnissanusa.com. I'm back with you on a Friday edition of Locked On Lions. Hope everybody's getting ready for a great weekend. We've got uh, some dry weather here the last couple of days. How about that? It seemed like it was raining or snowing every single day for uh, for like two weeks. So regardless, here we are getting ready for our first weekend without football. Don't tell me about the Pro Bowl and the little games that they play. I think it's cool. I saw Amon Ross St. Brown dancing with Baker Mayfield. It's always good. Amon Ross uh, did some interviews down, up in Vegas talking about unfinished business, but I just can't get down with all the stuff that goes on. Plus, Gardner Minshew is at the Pro Bowl. Come on. I can't take that. And I like, don't get me wrong, Minshew Mania was fine this year for the Colts, but let's be realistic here. All right, big news uh, coming out of the city of Miami. Teddy Bridgewater is retiring. We know that. Dave Burkett was the first to report that a few weeks ago, that the Lions backup quarterback, who's in his mid-30s, has decided enough is enough, and he's retiring from the NFL. And really, to be honest, Teddy Bridgewater barely played any snaps this year for the Lions. Uh, the highlight was where he, when he was wearing like number 98 or whatever it was um, um, in the uh, preseason. He is now taking a job at his alma mater, Miami Northwestern High School, which is really, really cool. He's going to be the head coach, is Teddy Bridgewater, at Miami Northwestern. And something he's always wanted to do, wants to give back to the community and with the kids, and he wants to coach his alma mater, which had a head coaching vacancy. So I think that is Absolutely cool, and you got to wish him well. It's a great backup quarterback pickup by Brad Holmes. Good news this year was the Lions didn't need him because Jared Goff played in every game. So, but what I really liked was I read this today, I believe it was in MLive.com, that Teddy Bridgewater is going to be mentoring Hendon Hooker all, all this year. Literally, Hooker is going to be moving in with Teddy Bridgewater down in Miami working with him daily, and just soaking it all in. Uh, Hennon Hooker, of course, was a rookie this year, didn't get in any games, is coming back from a torn ACL. At least right now on the depth chart, unless the Lions decide to bring in another veteran quarterback, Hendon Hooker will be your backup quarterback next year for Jared Goff. The fact that Bridgewater is going to take this kid in, let him live with him down in Miami, and mentor him, work with him, coach him up, this offseason is sweet. How great is that? And Hooker made a comment and said, look, he's been mentoring me all year. I listen to everything Teddy has to say. Uh, and he's been a great, you know, kind of personal coach for me. And now going into next season, Hooker will have um, more knowledge and have this kind of, you know, coaching from a veteran presence and somebody that's been in the league a long time in a Teddy Bridgewater, whether it was stops in Minnesota or Miami or or wherever, New Orleans, of course, the Lions. Um, Teddy Bridgewater, for, for Hendon Hooker, is just going to be a sponge and be around Teddy. So I love that. I mean, I think we've seen this. This is why this culture is different. This is why it just feels different right now down at 222 in, in, in Allen Park. Veteran guys want to be here. Veteran guys, even when they don't play, like a Bridgewater, like a Vitae, uh, when they got hurt this year. Uh, Emmanuel Mosley stuck around. Manuel Mosley tore his ACL again. He got into like three snaps and did it again. He could have easily gone back to the West Coast and 
you know, rehabbed and been away from the team. No, stuck around here, was on the sidelines of practice. Same with Hal Vitae, who's from Texas and lives down there. They all stuck around to want to be around this team. Now you got a guy that's retiring. He's had a great career and he's done. Still willing to mentor one of his teammates, now former teammates in Hendon Hooker, and help him get better. And uh, I just think that's fantastic. I love it. Um, this is how this thing is going to turn around. All right, you can have the best talent in the world, right? And the Lions have immense talent and improved talent. You can have great coaching. You can have all the luck in the world. But if you're not a team and you're not on the same page and you've got a couple of outliers or wherever it is, that's going to hold you back, right? Lions right now, I can never remember a time in my, geez, uh, almost 30 years living here that this has been so together. You know, you, you remember the 04 Pistons. You remember those Wings teams in the mid to late 90s. They were together. You remember the Jim Leland-led Tigers teams that made two World Series. They were together. They were a true team. That's what this Lions team is. And I told you guys earlier in the week, there are going to be some people that pick the Packers to win the division next year. All right? There are. That's going to take place. But find me a team with better chemistry, a, a better lead better equipped up here and physically than the Detroit Lions. Yeah, sure. Kansas City, they're amazing. All right. San Francisco, back in the Super Bowl twice and before you, whatever it is. All right. But the Lions are right there, man. They're right there. And they're retaining these coaches. Guys want to be back. It'll be very interesting to see what happens in free agency with, with players that maybe would take shorter term deals like a Gardner Johnson to this past year to come join this team. And to play for this coach. You know, Rag now said it cleaning out his locker the other day. Taylor Decker said it. Best leader we've been around. We'll do anything for Dan Campbell. You know, Jamison Williams talked about, you know, improving and really working at it. Because he doesn't want to let his head coach down. And he's made that promise to Dan Campbell. I love it. I think it is. Uh, I think it's awesome. I think it's something that uh, cannot go overlooked here is that a retired player is going to let another guy live in his house, Hendon Hooker, and work with him down in Miami this offseason to get him right and get him well and get him acclimated for backup quarterback duties. And no, Hendon Hooker is not going to be the starter next year. All you Jared Goff haters out there, please give me a break. Wouldn't surprise me if the Lions brought in a, a veteran to be a two or a three, but you never know. Jared Goff now, knock on wood, the last two years has been relatively healthy uh, for the Lions. So uh, that's been that's been a positive as well. All right. Uh, I want to get into some draft stuff. We haven't done a ton of draft because the Lions have been playing, right? So um, I want to do that coming up next and uh, and do that. So let's get into some draft talk, a mock draft from the athletic.com that I saw today. I want to share with you. We'll do that next right here on Locked On Lines. And our program today is brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. Start of every year, every small business owner, they do one thing. They ask themselves this question. What's the one move I can make It'll take my business to the next level in 2024. Well, LinkedIn Jobs knows that your success all depends on the team you surround yourself with. That's why LinkedIn Jobs has created the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board, all right? LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So, so easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours with LinkedIn Jobs. Small businesses rate it number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. Do me a favor. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash NFL. That's linkedin.com slash NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. And hey, Matt Terry here to tell you about our friends at DoorDash. Oh my goodness gracious. Look, look folks, I got it right here. I got that DoorDash bag because earlier today, 
decided I needed some Condado. Yes, have you had Condado tacos? Unbelievable. Got them from DoorDash. All right. It's amazing stuff. All the things that, that come with food delivery, I'm going with DoorDash because I want it hot, I want it efficient, and I want it delivered right to my door. All right. The game went to a timeout tonight. If you're watching some college hoops or NBA, time to order in with DoorDash. Is it halftime? If you're watching the Pistons play tonight, ordering time with DoorDash. All right. You can get pizza, wings, burgers, whatever you want with DoorDash. You get chips, dips, nachos, everything you need for maybe your favorite retailer, not just from restaurants, on DoorDash and get it all delivered without missing any of the game. You're going to do this. You're going to get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order, when you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCKED23, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-23. Subject to change, terms apply. All right, folks, mock draft time. I'm very excited about it. The Athletic.com. We're going to see a ton of these mock drafts. But just to give you a little background on the Athletic.com's latest mock draft, as I will uh, scroll up here because I had it ready. And then, of course, my computer messed up. Uh, this was written by uh, Deontay Lee uh, yesterday. All right. Mock draft. And you're going to see a lot of this. The Bears taking Caleb Williams at number one. The Commanders taking Drake May at number two. Marvin Harrison Jr., number three to the Patriots. All of that. All right. You're going to see a lot of quarterbacks, a lot of wide receivers. So the Lions this year are drafting 29th in the first round based off of, of course, their success this season. Baltimore is 30th, Kansas City 31, San Francisco 32. So the first round is set. What have we said on this pro, uh, program? Program, what have we said? Lions need a cornerback. They need corners. They got to get corners. In this mock draft, there were four corners taken before the Lions even drafted at number 29. Terion Arnold from Alabama went number 11 in this mock draft to Minnesota. Kool-Aid McKinstry, I'll bring him here, went 18 to Cincinnati. Cooper DeJean, who I love. If you watch Big Ten football, Cooper D is a stud. Guy returns punts. He does everything. Number 19 to the Rams. Got injured, though. That's probably why he slid. And uh, uh, Kamari Lassiter from um, Georgia went number 22 to Philly. So if you're thinking about a cornerback, Four in this mock draft went before the Lions picked at number 29. So at number 29, uh, what did Mr. Lee have the Lions doing? He had the Lions drafting Nate Wiggins, cornerback from Clemson. This is what Deontay Lee writes. Quote, this would be a coup for Detroit is getting Wiggins so late, likely would require a run on offensive tackles, similar to how it happened in this mock draft. Wiggins has a blue chip combination of height and explosiveness, and he changes direction well at top speed. His ball skills and competitiveness at the catch point give him game-changing potential. All right, so in this mock, at least, first one that we've done, we're going to do tons of them, the Lions get a cornerback, all right, in Nate Wiggins from Clemson. So he's coming from a pretty big program. I'm not going to uh, uh, lie to you guys and tell you that I have seen Nate Wiggins tape and that I've watched all this film on all these cornerbacks. I haven't. I've seen McKinstry more than anybody because he was an all-everything corner at Alabama and his name was Kool-Aid, okay? But Nate Wiggins, to me, sounds like he fits the bill. The Lions need corners. They're going to probably sign a corner in free agency. They're probably going to bring some of their own guys back, possibly. And I would figure that they're going to take a few in the draft as well. Now, at the Senior Bowl that's going on in Mobile, Alabama, it's texting some people that are down there, and there are two corners that keep coming up in my text messages that everybody's raving about down in Mobile. Hopefully, we'll get Jim Nagy on next week from the Senior Bowl, the executive director, to uh, join us and recap the game, and we'll ask him all these questions. But Quinion Mitchell, the cornerback from Toledo, some people feel is going to be a top three or four cornerback in this draft. Now, again, great ball skills, good size, and he's killing it down at the Senior Bowl, right? And a lot of you probably don't know who that is because he played at Toledo, but been a good football program, Jason Candle and company down with the Rockets. Uh, Quinion Mitchell is a name to watch. Another one that is doing really well at the Senior Bowl and is moving up 
is Bo Melton's little brother, Max Melton from Rutgers. Uh, Bo Melton, of course, wide receiver for the Packers. Max Melton has had a really good senior bowl. And uh, I've gotten text messages that he could be a day two, day three type. Uh, a little bit smaller at 5'11", but still kicking ass at the senior bowl and doing well. So the Lions are going to have tons of options at cornerback. Um, trying to remember, Brad Holmes off the top of my head drafting corners. Uh, he, of course, signed Cam Sutton. He drafted Chase Lucas in the seventh round a few years ago. Um, Jerry Jacobs was undrafted. Uh, Cam Sutton was a free agent signee. Will Harris was uh, inherited by Brad Holmes. Emmanuel Mosley signed as free agent. There haven't been a ton of drafted corners by Holmes. So they could go, they could go that route this year, and it would not surprise me. But the Lions need help there. They need help at edge. They need help at interior defensive line. And Brad Holmes, as we know, is going to take the best available player no matter what position it is. We saw that this year with Jameer Gibbs at 12 and Jack Campbell at 18. All right, that'll do it for our Friday edition of Locked on Lions. Thanks for making this your first listen, checking us out wherever you get your podcast right here on the Locked on Podcast Network. We'll do some Senior Bowl recap again next week and uh, do more right here on Locked on Lions. Have a great weekend, everybody.